your Bible, if you will, this morning and open it to the Gospel of John, John chapter 11. John chapter 11, I hope you have your Bible and you'll follow along with us as we read the Scriptures. And We're pretty much just going to focus right here this morning, John chapter 11, if you will, and uh, verse 45 is where we're going to begin reading. So John chapter 11, if you will, verse 45 I'll give you time. I like to hear those pages turning, you know. But if it goes on too long, maybe not. So I heard a preacher one time say, if you haven't found it by now, just look intelligently at whatever page you're at. <laughs> but I, was, I wouldn't say that to you. John 11, verse 45. The Bible said that many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them named Cephas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. Uh, let's pray together, if you would. Heavenly Father, I ask you now to help me this morning to bring the message you've given me. And Lord, help me to say exactly what you want said, and would you give us good attention this morning. Lord, I pray you'd speak to every heart that's here. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Um, the events of our text and what we've read here this morning and most of the chapter happened in the city, uh, the little village actually of Bethany. And, and Bethany was just a small village located about two miles from Jerusalem. And it was on the eastern slope of the Mount of Olives. And uh, it's frequently mentioned in the scriptures in, in relation to the many memorable events that uh, are in the life and the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And one thing I found interesting about Bethany and about that village is the meaning of its name. There's a little disagreement over what the word Bethany means, and some say it means house of dates, and they say that's derived from the many palm trees that are in the area, but others claim that it means a house of misery. Well, I, one thing's for sure. On the day of this recorded uh, incidents that are here today, it wasn't a house of misery on that day. Because it's on that day uh, that we find that Lazarus, who had been dead for four days, and they had two sisters, they were mourning his death, but it's on that day the Lord Jesus Christ resurrected him from the dead. And that one who had been dead was made to live again, and man, you're talking about <coughs> rejoicing and uh, excitement, uh, it was that way. Nothing remotely close had ever happened in Bethany uh, before, and nothing has ever happened like that since then in this world, all right? But I want you to notice, though, especially this morning, the two different reactions that there were to the events of that day, all right? Would you look in your Bible, verse 45, all right? Verse 45, that says, Many, all right, Many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, many of them believed on him. That was the reaction of many. But I want you to notice verse 46. But some of them, some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Many of them believed, but some of them went their way. All right? Some of them went their way. I want to speak to you this morning on the subject of going your way. Going your way. Uh, you know, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, 
but the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way that seems right unto man, but the end, the Bible says, the ways of death. Um, I, I'm looking at these scriptures this morning, and I'm thinking about what had happened in Bethany. Uh, these people had seen the Savior of the world in person. They had been there. They had heard him call Lazarus to come forth from the grave after the stone had been rolled away. They had heard that. They had seen that. They knew Lazarus had died. These were not strangers in the area. These were not folks that had come in and asked him, what's going on, what's going on? No, they were people that were there. They knew the circumstances. They knew about the death of Lazarus. They had been there when Jesus said, roll the stone away. They had heard Martha say, Lord, don't do that. He's been dead four days. He stinks. But they'd seen the stone rolled away. And they'd heard Jesus call his name, call him forth out of that grave. And they'd seen Lazarus come out. Now, I'm here to tell you, they'd seen what's going on, all right? They could have believed. They could have believed. But instead, the Bible said they went their ways. They went their ways. They chose a different way. Listen, they chose a way of tradition. They chose a way of tradition. They chose the way of religion. Say, so, well, preacher, aren't, aren't you religious? Nah, I really don't really like the word religion too much. Uh, it's not religion that I preach to you this morning. It's a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is a huge, huge difference between the two. A lot of people got religion. These folks here that went their way, they chose the way of religion. They chose the way, if you will, of peer pressure. They chose the way of stubbornness. We're just not going to accept this man, Jesus. We're just not going to do it. Now I want to talk to you about their way, all right? going their way, but it's also going the way a lot of folks go today. First of all, I want you to see this. It's the way of rejection. It is the way of rejection. Now notice. Notice what they said in verse 47. Verse 47. The, the last phrase there in verse 47 is kind of entertaining to me. Notice what the Bible says. For this man doeth many miracles. No kidding? Really? That's one of those statements that today we'd say, well, duh, all right? Yeah, he did a lot of miracles. He, he had done some amazing things, but wait a minute. They rejected it. They rejected it. Uh, this is the one that, you know, had, had turned the water into wine. This is the one that had fed the 5,000 one sack lunch. This is the one that had healed a man who had been lame for 38 years. This is the one that they had been there and saw him raise Lazarus from the dead. And, and all of that, he'd done a lot of miracles. But wait a minute, they rejected the truth. They rejected him. They didn't want the one that brought life. They didn't want him, all right? They rejected his life, if you will, in favor of the darkness that they lived in and the hopelessness that they lived in. They rejected him. And that was their way. I'll be honest, I've seen a lot of people do the same thing. I've seen a lot of people do the same thing. I've taken the Word of God, and usually out of the New Testament, and I've, I've put it in front of folks, and we've sat and we've talked about it, and I've shown them what the Scripture said, and, and I've taken them through what we sometimes call the plan of salvation, where the Bible says that all of sin, and folks, we're all sinners. Right. Every one of us, we're all sinners. No doubt about that. We've all sinned. We've come short of the glory of God, all right? Yep, we, we're sinners. Well, wait a minute. The Bible said there's a price on sin. That price is death. Right. Price is death. I, I've taken people through those scriptures and uh, they've said, yep, I believe that. I, I realize I'm a sinner. And yep, I, I realize that, yep, I, you know, the Lord, yep, he died for my sin. But boy, when you come right down to it, when you take him as your Savior, I've heard many people say, no, not today. Let me think about it. I'll wait a while. And really, they rejected him. Even after they stood there, understood their condition, they were lost. They understood their need. They needed forgiveness. They needed a Savior. But they rejected him. That's exactly what happened there. 
exactly what happened here in the scriptures. They went their way. Their way was the way of rejection, all right? But it wasn't only the way of rejection. They weren't happy to just reject the Lord. I want you to notice what they said, all right? Notice it said they went their way, notice, to the Pharisees. Right. To the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees were the, if you will, the enemies of the Lord Jesus Christ right. when he was here on this earth. They were constantly trying to find fault with him. They were constantly trying to trip him up with questions. They were constantly trying to belittle him and, and accuse him of blasphemy. Constantly, all the time. Well, these folks not happy to just reject the Savior. They wanted to rebel against him. And so they go to the Pharisees and the question is, what do we? What in the world are we going to do about him? I mean, what are we going to do about him? Now, here he is. He's doing all these miracles. Obviously, we've seen them. Now, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Uh, they weren't content to just reject him, but we want to rebel against him. Rebel against him. Man, I see people today do the same thing. You take them the Word of God. You show them what the Bible says you ought to do. I see kids that sometimes grow up in church grow up and they've been taught the truth they know the truth but man as soon as they get to a point where they can they rebel against everything they've heard and everything right. they've been taught yeah. I'll go my way and I'll do my thing the way I want to do it just rebel against <coughs> what they know to be the truth yeah. rebel against it fight against it alright hey not enough to reject the light not enough to reject the truth no rebel against it Job talks about those that rebel against the light. Rebel against the light. It, it's like, uh, it's, hey, turn out that light. I don't want it shining on me. Put it out. Put it out. Rebel against it. Rebel against that. Not only do they reject it, not only do they rebel against it, but man, uh, it's the way of rage. Yes. The way of rage. Notice what the Bible says here in verse 53. Verse 53, then from that day forth, they put, took counsel together for to put him to death. To put him to death. Wasn't enough to reject him. It wasn't enough to simply reject what he did and to rebel against him. No, they were in a rage. Such that caused them to plot to kill him. To kill him. Uh, we hear about stuff on the news about folks that decide to kill somebody else because they just rage against them. I mean, here's, here's the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about what they had against him. Well, he had turned water into wine. And you know what? He, he probably didn't... Uh, probably didn't really check out the sanitation of those jugs that they put it in. So there's a problem, right? And, and you know, he's making stuff, manufacturing without a license, right? He's manufacturing without a license, and therefore we lose the tax money on that, and, and so we're going to rail against that. And then, uh, then we stop to think about the time that he took clay and spittle, and he put it on that fellow's eyes and said, go wash under in the pool of Siloam. Can you imagine how unsanitary that is? So the health department is upset with him. I mean, here's the health department. They're in a rage. This guy doesn't care about sanitation. And uh, I, I can't believe he would do such a thing. But not only that, here he is in uh, down there at the pool of Siloam with that man who's been lame for 38 years and he's practicing medicine without a license. How dare him? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Well, wait a minute. What else were they mad about? Amen. What else inflamed their rage so much? Well, he, he resurrected Lazarus from the dead. I mean, he's causing people to doubt every mortician in the country. You said, preacher, you're nuts. I'm just telling you, I don't understand why they were upset. Why rage against him and say, we've got to kill him? We've got to put a stop to what he's doing. And we've got to stop what's going on. And if we have to kill him, let's kill him. Rage. 
I'll be honest, I, I believe today the rage of the unbeliever is aimed oftentimes at the work of God. That is aimed at the work of God. Uh, people today will do everything they can to stop you from witnessing. Stop you from witnessing. Uh, folks have gone and, you know, here in our country, we're, we celebrate the fact that we have free speech. But here's folks that have gone to witness and they've been stopped from witnessing and, and arrested because it offended somebody. It offended somebody. I was visiting yesterday and talking with a couple that has visited our church and they said we'll sometimes go down to Sundance Square and just sit around and you know, enjoy and watch people and do that. And she said there's two guys that come, one on Friday and one on Saturday evening, and they'll stand there and they'll preach. And, and they told me, they said, the rage that is against them is unbelievable. Right. Said people have spit on them. People have mocked them and belittled them and, you know, everything. And uh, they, they, I said, well, you know what? That's the rage of the unbeliever today. Stop the witness. Stop the witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't allow anybody to do that. We were knocking doors in an apartment complex a couple years ago now, and I had somebody say, when we knocked on their door, they said, well, you can't do that here. And I said, okay. He said, you argue with them? No. I just tried to witness to them. He said, well, they didn't listen. What'd you do? Well, we went to the next door. Right. And they said, well, somebody will be here pretty quick to put a stop to you. He said, what'd you do? Well, I was going to witness until somebody showed up, all right? Yeah. And you know what? Nobody ever showed up. Right. Nobody ever showed up. Um, but we have the idea that, hey, we can stop that. A lot of rage directed against the work of God today. Uh, that rage <laughs> takes the form sometimes, hey, we'll take away your tax-exempt status. We'll remove that from you. We'll zone them out with building codes where they can't build, all right? They can't put up a church building. They will criticize them. We'll carp at them. We'll condemn them. We'll belittle them. We'll berate them. We'll do everything we can. Why? There's that rage against the work of God. Rage against the work of God. It's still there, folks. It's still there. It's still come. All done. All done to discourage the believer from you doing what you should and carrying out your service to the wonderful Lord Jesus Christ that died to save you. They're doing everything they can to stop you. All of that rage, pin up. We need to put stop. How dare them do that? How dare they? Uh, it's amazing. Why? Well, they raged against them. Hey, listen, they went their ways. They went their ways. It was a way of rejection. It was a way of rebellion. It was the way of rage. But look at verse 48. Maybe this is the crux of it. All right? Maybe this is the crux of it. Look at verse 48. If we let them thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. Hey, we'll lose our place. We'll lose our place. You know, I stopped and thinking about that, and I was reading through the scriptures, and I think, hey, wait a minute. They thought they'd lose their place as if their place was more important than the work and the will of God. Hey, my place is not more important than the work and the will of God. Your place is not more important than the work of God. It's not more important. Their problem was a problem that a lot of people still have today. It's a problem of pride. Hey, it's all about me. It's all about me. It's what's in it for me. Or what's going to lift me up. What's going to put me on the pedestal. What's going to bring me to people's attention. It's all about me. Just lift us up. Ourselves. Hey, it's the pride of man. The pride of man. The pride of this old flesh. The pride of this old flesh. It's pride that keeps so many from humbling themselves <coughs> today before God. Multitudes today will not humble themselves before God. In just a little while, we're going to ask you to stand. We're going to give an invitation. I, I realize today a lot of churches don't do this anymore. They don't give a public invitation. We invite people to come forward. And we invite you to come. And if you need to deal with, uh, uh, do business with God, we invite you to come and kneel here at these steps. If you're like me and you really can't kneel because your knees won't let you, then have a seat on one of those front pews and pray and you do business with God. Well, preacher, why can't I do it right here where I am? Why can't you humble yourself before God? 
Yeah. Why can't you do that? Why can't you do that? Pride. Pride. What is, what's somebody going to think? Well, you didn't worry about that when you spiked your hair and, you know, grew it up that way and, and changed it into every color of the rainbow. You didn't worry about what people going to think, did you? You know, isn't it amazing the way people react nowadays? We've got the strangest things that people do, but if it's doing anything in the name of God, well, what's somebody going to think? Right. Hey, what's God think about you? What's God think about you? What does God think about the way you're living? Hey, pride keeps people from admitting their sin. Admitting their sin. I remember when I was just a kid, I was probably about 11 years old, maybe 12. And there was a family that, folks that came to church down in Fort Myers, Florida. And, man, I, I loved them. They, they were just enjoyable people to be around. But one day at church, something happened, and they got mad. And in their anger, they did what people often do when they're angry. They say stuff that they shouldn't say. And that later on, they wish they hadn't said. Well, one of the things these folks said was, we're never coming back to this church. I remember my dad, who was the pastor, going and visiting in their home. And they said to him, Preacher, oh, I'm so ashamed of myself. I, I shouldn't have said that. It was so wrong. So wrong. I was mad and I shouldn't have gotten mad. But here's where they went. But Preacher, I said I wasn't ever coming back, so I'm never coming back. Why? Pride. Pride. Hey, pride keeps us from admitting we're wrong. Pride keeps us from coming to God and confessing our sin. We're worried about it. You know, a preacher gets up and preaches, and, and, and whatever the subject of the message is, people come forward and pray. Now, uh, we're going to invite people in a little bit to come forward and pray, and, and somebody's going to say, well, if I go forward, everybody's going to think i got trouble with pride. Now, I got news for you. And I've said this multitude of times. If you're sitting in the congregation and somebody comes forward because God's spoken to their heart, it's not my job or your job to figure out why they're there. It's my job and your job to pray for them and think maybe I ought to be there with them. And we live in a day where pride, boy, it holds us back. It won't let us do what we should. I think it's pride that caused them to reject the Savior. Their pride in their religion. Well, we've had this religion and it's been good enough for years. Well, wait a minute. You need more than religion. You need a relationship with Jesus Christ. But pride wouldn't let them turn loose. Hey, brother, and confessed their sin, they went on their way rather than to turn to Christ for help. Went on their way. I'll be honest with you, I think pride's taken a multitude of people to hell because they won't come to the Savior. They just won't admit, I can't do it by myself. I can't do it by myself. I can't get there. I can't live it good enough. Pride. Hey, pride caused them to rebel. You check it out in the scripture, it was pride that caused Satan to rebel against God. Yes, Come on, preach. Caused Lucifer to rebel against God. Pride. pride. Pride causes us to rage sometimes. Pride. Now, let me say this to you. They went their way. But could have point out to you God has a better way. Even in the midst of all of this, one of those Pharisees, look in verse 50. One of those Pharisees, verse 49, tells us there's a fellow named Cephas. One of those Pharisees said, you know nothing at all, nor consider 
that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. Hey, the Bible said this he spake not of himself, but hey, he was prophesying that Jesus should <coughs> die for the nation. Listen, God has a better plan. God has a better way for you than your way. It's a better way to go. It's not the way of rejection. It's the way of acceptance. It's the way of accepting Jesus Christ as the only payment for sin. The only payment for sin. Nobody else could pay that payment, but he could because he lived a perfect life. Hey, his way is the way not of rebellion. No, it's the way of giving in and following and serving. It's not the way of rage. It's the way of, Lord, here am I, which has saved me. It's the way of the just dying for the unjust. That's his way. That's his way. It's not our way. It's not the way we choose. But it's the way he chose. Now, I'll tell you, he didn't have to do it. Take the Bible, if you will, over to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, would you? Hebrews chapter 2, and verse 9. I want you to see what the Scripture says, all right? See what the Word of God says. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible says, but we see Jesus. Hey, they saw Jesus too. They saw Him in the flesh. You and I don't see Him in the flesh. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you what, that way, the way of God is sufficient for everybody today. It's sufficient. It's the way that the Lord wants you and I to go. He wants us to go not our way. Not our way. All we like sheep have gone astray. That's when we go our way. Man, I, I've stood before young people and preached to them and, uh, and pled with them and oftentimes begged with them. Hey, look, you're fixing to make a real dumb mistake and you're going to pay for it the rest of your life. Don't do it! Well, the Lord Jesus Christ is saying to these people here and he's saying to you and I today, don't make a mistake and pay for it for the rest of eternity. Don't rebel against Him. Don't reject the Savior. Don't reject Him. Don't rage against Him. Take Him. Hey, it's expedient that one man should die. You know what? That man was the man Christ Jesus. Yeah. And He went to the cross and He paid our sin debt. You stop and think about that. He paid the debt you owe but can't pay. He paid your debt. All you have to do is come and trust Him. Call upon Him. Ask Him to save your soul. And the Bible says He'll do it. If you'll come to Him. If you'll turn from your sin this morning. And, and be willing to admit, I am a sinner. And accept Him. But listen, after you're saved, He's got a way for you to go. He's got a way for you to walk. He's got a way for you to live. These folks that took and that uh, believed on Him. They didn't just go their own way after believing on them. It changed them. It changed them. Now, my friend, today, you can go your own way or you can believe on Him. You can believe on Him. Hey, you can believe what this preacher said to you from the Word of God or you can reject it and walk out that door and say, I'll do my own thing. Right. I'll do my own thing. Tons of people have done it. Hey, you can follow man today or you can follow the Son of God. It's pretty simple. You've got a choice. Now, which one are you going to do? Well, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to reject what the Bible says. I'm going to reject what the Word of God has to say. I'm going to reject the Savior. And I'll do what I want to do. And I'll live my life the way I want to live it. Well, then don't get mad at God later when it's a disaster. All right. Amen. Don't get mad at Him. Amen. 
on the other hand this morning you can decide you know what I think I'll take him I'll trust him as my savior I'm going to take my life and give it to him and I'll follow him which are you going to do which are you going to do we already, maybe many of you would say today, preacher, I already decided that years ago that I trusted Christ as my Savior. Good. But there's some of you sitting here who never have done that. Would you trust Him today? Is it what I need to do? In just a moment, we're going to stand. We're going to sing the verse of invitation. And while they're singing, all you need to do is step out, walk down this aisle, meet me right here at the front and say, preacher, I'm going to trust Christ. And what we're going to do is we're going to have somebody take the Scripture and open the Word of God and show you exactly what the Bible says. Because I want you to understand what you're doing. Scripture. I want you to know what you're doing. That's what you need to do. For some of you here this morning, you've said, Preacher, I've trusted Him. But which way have you taken with your life? Are you going your way? Are you seriously and as much as you can trying to do what God wants you to do with your life. She has a will for you. The Bible said they went their way. They went their ways. What are you doing? Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask you this morning to help us. Lord, we need to hear from you. We need you to deal with every heart today. And Lord, I pray that you will. It's easy in the flesh because of pride to reject the Lord. It's easy to follow the flesh and rebel against Him. But Lord, how much better it is to go your way. That way that you've provided, you've given us the opportunity, all we have to do is come to you. You've said to us, Cast all of our burdens on you because you care for us. Lord, would you help us to do that today? Would you deal with every heart this morning? Help us to face today, okay, which way am I going to go? Am I going to follow man or am I going to follow God? What am I going to do? Lord, help us this morning, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.